Tonight on CTV, we ask students their perspective on the upcoming semester, all while COVID restrictions continue to be in effect. Then, we take a look at how CSU is helping regrow trees in the areas where the Cameron Peak fire happened. And, get the latest on CSU's hockey's canceled season with Brendan Fairbairn. All that here on CTV News Tonight. Good evening, Rams. I'm Weston Hubbard. And I'm Kenneth Frederick. Our top story tonight starts with a question. What are students' thoughts on the next semester? Many people are already thinking about what the next semester will look like and what the situation will hold for them. We talked to students to figure out how they were feeling about the semester to come. A study published by Plus One has shown that COVID-19 is but a considerable amount of stress on college students. Over 80% of participants from seven different universities said that they had had moderate or high levels of stress due to COVID. But how are CSU students feeling about college during the pandemic in the new semester ahead? Construction management major Ben Harris talked about how off-campus and out-of-state students are already being negatively affected. You know, out-of-state kids don't, don't want to sign a lease or don't want to pick somewhere to live here in Fort Collins because if we are online, they can do that from home and save money. Ultimately, students feel that despite class being a challenge due to COVID, they plan to return next semester with the hope that being on campus might bring back a sense of normalcy. My classes are really tough and they carry their burden also like mentally for you. Like, well, it is what it is and we have to push through it. If you would like more information on what CSU's academic calendar will look like for the next semester, you can go to catalog.colostate.edu. I, I'm a communications major, so I'm just excited to learn how to talk next semester. What about you? Um, you know, I'd really like to see a lot more hybrid style and a lot less just purely online, just because online really isn't my kind of environment. I get lazy with online. Like, Zoom just de demotivates me completely, so I get it, yeah. <clears throat> Due to the 2021 National Defense Authorization Act, Colorado State University will be shutting down its Confucius Institute as of June 30th, according to Source.Colo State. The act passed with congressional support and would restrict access to the Department of Defense of Research for any school with a Confucius Institute. CSU uses research and funding from the Department of the Defense, so it will be closing the doors to their institute in order to continue to have access to that funding. Have you ever tried to look up at the lights of the stars in the night sky, but were stopped because of light pollution? Well, now the City Council is working on updating lighting codes that may help darken the night sky once again. The Council is looking at updating its current exterior lighting code to reduce light pollution and glare that affects surrounding homes. To do this, City Council is looking at replacing the one-size-fits-all standard of maximum light output to a more nuanced system that changes maximum output depending how much the space is used during the night. Places along the Foothills area by Horsetooth have limited light allowances, where places like Old Town or along College Avenue are allowed to use more lighting. Councilman Ross Cuniff supported the plan for the code changes and also talked about the other benefits they may bring. Social side, um, studies are showing that um, excess lights in people's um, nighttime environment disrupt sleep cycles and leads to poorer health, poorer educational outcomes. The Cameron Peak fires that completely ravaged the Larimer County in fall 2020 left quite a scar on the wilderness. But Colorado State has a plan to help combat that. According to Source.Colo State, the Colorado State Forest Service Nursery is providing seedlings of trees in order to help combat the loss of so many that were lost in the fire. The staff, alongside students from CSU, are going to help grow around 100,000 seeds per year. Some of the Warner College of Natural Resources students get to help take care of these seedlings and watch them grow. This is truly a great way to combat the horrendous fires that did occur. Two professors from Colorado State University's College of Agricultural Sciences were recently awarded the 2021 Neutron Scholars. Thomas Borsch and Don Thillamy were recognized for their excellence in teaching, research, and engagement. The faculty members were noted as having significant impacts on their respective fields. Both Borch and Thilamy are the second class of Nutrient Distinguished Scholars and, with the award, will receive the honorific title that includes one-time discretionary funding. 
After hearing the announcement, the Associate Dean for Research, Jan Leach, spoke, quote, Outstanding faculty like Thomas and Don are crucial to accomplishing the college's mission and to elevating CSU's profile around the world, end quote. Always great to be recognizing some staff. Stick around, Rance, because we have a local weather with Morgan Gardner up next. That's here on CTV. How's it going, Rams? My name is Morgan Gardner coming at you with some weather. Let's get straight into it. Tonight we're sitting at a nice 27 degrees. It's mostly clear outside, not too much of the wind out there, so it's pretty nice for an evening. Much better compared to last night for sure. No snow out there. And if we go to the clouds, this is what we're seeing over the next couple days or so. A um, little bit of cloud coverage over the night, um, but that means that the weekend is going to be nice and sunny. If we go into overnight lows, this is what we're looking at. So over on I-25, we're going to be seeing a lot of the uh, mid-20s there. Um, so not too warm, but pretty good for overnight. No snow, which is going to be nice. Um, if we look over on the western side, uh, Grand Junction sitting at a nice 31 degrees. Definitely getting the nicer end of the spectrum for tonight's highs and lows. And tomorrow's highs are going to look a lot the same. Grand Junction still sitting up there, uh, 46 degrees, nice and sunny. Um, along the I-25 spectrum, we're going to be seeing a lot of the upper 30s. Um, Port Collins being a nice 38 degrees, which is going to mean a lot of sun. And if we look at tomorrow's forecast specifically, we're sitting at a nice 39 degrees Fahrenheit, low of 23, partly sunny. A little bit of wind, but not too much. Um, some gusts can get up there to be about 18 miles an hour, but nothing too crazy for all of y'all. And if we look at the five-day forecast, we can see that it's going to be sunny, um, except for Saturday, which is a little odd. We're going to be seeing a 81% chance of uh, precipitation there, a little bit of chance of snow flurries. Um, but for the rest of the week, we'll be seeing upper 40s, um, which means that it's going to be nice and sunny. So get out there and enjoy the sun while you can. I most certainly will. And that is all the time we have on weather tonight. Uh, get out there and stay warm, uh, but enjoy that weather while you can. Stick around after the break. We're going to be seeing some more news. Welcome back, Rams. There's more news to get into, so let's get right into it. <clears throat> Being in high school, I remember the pressure of trying to pass all of my classes. Luckily, the Poudere School District will be there to trying to combat the cost of education by making summer school free for all its high school students. Last year, they offered something similar, free summer school to all those that qualified also for free lunches through the school. This is an effort to help the students, as Scott Nielsen, the superintendent assistant for secondary schools, was quoted from the Colorado and saying this is a way to help the students that are behind in credits and take away any barriers that they think might be there. With everything COVID-19 related, having a relief on trying to catch up in school always sounds like a great delight. The Foothills Mall may be getting a completely new look after almost foreclosing at the end of last year. The mall fell into receivership when developers failed to make an important payment on their loan in December of last year. Northern Colorado-based McWinney Real Estate has signed a purchasing agreement and plans to transform the property. They're currently in the due diligence process where they will figure out the true value of the location. McWinney says that they plan to build stores, restaurants, and housing on the property. I, I love them all. I just love going there. I used to live near Park Meadows Mall, so coming up here, I definitely was a different vibe. But I kind of like them all because it's indoors, and I feel like I don't have to worry if it's snowing. So, you know, I'm looking forward to them building something new there because I think the only thing I've gone to the Foothills Mall for in my two years of living up here in Fort Collins is probably Annie's Pretzels. Mine's Bath and Body Works candles all all the time. <laughs> The weekly ASCSU meeting was held tonight, or last night and talked about the facilities that were related to the committees on the campus, a bill to help increase voter engagement, and much, much more. Under God, under God, under God indivisible, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This week, the ASCSU Senate talked about what is coming up for the campus, including remodels or new buildings, and how they were going to use the funds that they are now receiving in order to help the Rams better.
Relating to last week's conversation, talking about budgetary affairs as well, this one differs as last week was talking about people's wages within the ASCSU government, with commentary from people such as Hannah Taylor and Tristan Reyes. Another bill was discussed in order with the budgetary to use $61,200 from the ASCSU Senate's General Discretionary Fund. This bill would use the funds to help fund Rams Against Hunger and to try and help install a permanent food pantry on the first floor of the General Service Building. Unanimously, the bill for Rams Against Hunger did pass and will be put into order as soon as they can get it available. Outside of the bill being talked about, inclusivity was one of the major talks about tonight during the ASCSU meeting. Part of the inclusivity talks relate to the campus going to be remodeled and hoping to include some more diversity. Such diversity would include things such as gender-neutral bathrooms and other ways to make Rams feel like there is less gender-specific options on campus and make it more available to all. Discussions were also held for a bill to help try and increase voter engagement along the Rams who are wanting to vote in the 2021 fall and spring elections for ASCSU. We will continue to update you on ASCSU as we can. For the future of ASCSU, you can look to CTV to cover it all and keep you up to date on the latest news. Heart of the Rockies Church has decided to build cheap housing on its empty 11 acres to serve the community. This comes after plans to create a youth building center got put on hold during the 2008 recession. The new project will be working with CARES Housing, Habitat for Humanity, and Friends of La Acre to create more affordable housing opportunities. Pastor Melissa St. Clair said in an interview with the Coloradan, Coloradan that she didn't know if there was a greater need in the community than affordable housing. Two weeks ago, we covered the court case of Dante Lucas and the disappearance of his ex-girlfriend, Kelsey Schelling. Back in 2014, the case, had been put on, um, the case has now been put on hold due to several days due to one of the people in the courtroom testing positive for coronavirus. But since that, we have now updated that the quarantine is out and the case is back in session starting February 24th, 2021. The case is looking to have several more key witnesses come into play. Dante was arrested nearly four years ago and nobody has ever been found, leaving this to be a rather interesting case in the end. We will update to you here at CTV Channel 11 as more information becomes available. Well, Rams, that's all the news we have for you tonight. But do not go anywhere yet. We got the sports coming up next with Brent, Brendan Fairbairn, and he's going to be talking all about the CSU hockey and Mountain West swimming and the latest on the Blitz Season 2.